Are you currently using an old outdated router or maybe the one that your ISP or internet service provider is allowing you to rent every month? Boy, have I got something to show you. Hey everyone, Danny here with DTC, or Danny's Tech Channel if this is your first time. We frequently talk about hardware reviews, PC builds, and sometimes uh, how-to videos also. Anyway, let's get right to the point. My ISP, or like I said, internet service provider, they offered me gigabit connection for my current price that I was paying for um, actually a hundred megabit connection. So they have different tiers of your internet connections. The speeds that they offer are 100, 300, and uh, gigabit speed or their giga blast i guess they call it i'm not sure but anyways so they offered me the same price for my for the higher speed so i was like oh well that that's a no-brainer why not just give me the faster speed and i'll pay the same price however my current setup that i was running as far as a modem and router couldn't handle the gigabit speed that cox was offering so i started doing some research then i discovered wi-fi 6. let's check it out Okay, first things first, let's talk about Wi-Fi 6, kind of what it is and why you should be interested in it. Wi-Fi 6 is the next generation of Wi-Fi standard. The older standards of Wi-Fi, you had the, they're all numbered designators with letters at the end of them. So Wi-Fi 4 was technically the 802.11n. That was, that was what they were deeming Wi-Fi 4, but they didn't use the lump number schemes that they're using now, I guess they wanted to simplify it so that everyone would understand, hey, this is better than last year's thing. So Wi-Fi 5 jumped up and came to 802.11ac. That's what most of your current Wi-Fi routers run. So Wi-Fi 6 is the next step in this evolution. Wi-Fi 6 is 802.11ax. Most new routers will have some kind of designator. My Asus one that I just got refers to it in the corner here. It says Wi-Fi 6, real easy to, to distinguish. So anyway, getting onto the benefits here of Wi-Fi 6. Wi-Fi 6 is designed for crowded wireless networks. If you have a lot of stuff going on in your household, whether it be uh, you have TVs connected that stream content from Netflix, Hulu, Disney, whatever, whatever you stream from, that's gonna take up bandwidth. You have your cell phones connected to it, that takes up bandwidth. The more cell phones, the more bandwidth you have to share. So think of it as like a highway. Everything has to come along this highway and share this uh, data transfer. So the more things you have on the highway, the more crowded it gets, the more congested everything is. That's the easiest analogy I can think of. Another benefit for Wi-Fi 6 is it's up to 1.25 times faster speed for all of your wireless devices, whether it be your laptop, your desktop with Wi-Fi, a cell phone, a television, you name it. I mean, everything is connected to Wi-Fi right now. Things that will make you wanna jump on the Wi-Fi 6 bandwagon even more. Better battery life for your laptops and cell phones. Because the device does not have to ping the router as much to try to get through the traffic, it's uh, saving battery life because it's not actually transmitting data as often as it would normally on a Wi-Fi 5 network. So that's another benefit is like your laptops and your cell phones and stuff like that will get better battery performance. You have more range over the 5 gigahertz like Wi-Fi 5 network. Wi-Fi 6, 5 gigahertz or even 6 gigahertz that'll be upcoming soon will have a better range than what Wi-Fi 5 currently has. The final benefit that I see is Wi-Fi 6 is compatible with everything previously. So now it won't give you the faster speeds or the better bandwidth because of devices until you start to get devices that can uh, take advantage of Wi-Fi 6 networks. But it is backwards compatible, so all your previous devices will work on the new upgraded network if you decide to jump on Wi-Fi 6. Some devices that currently have Wi-Fi 6 capability are as follows. The iPhone 11, the Pro, and the Pro Max currently have Wi-Fi 6 built into them. The Samsung Galaxy S10, SE, S10e, Note 10, S20, and the Fold. Some laptops are the Asus Chromebook Flip C436, the Dell XPS 13, the 2020 model, HP Spectre X360, the Lenovo Yoga C940, and the LG Gram 17. Those are just a few laptops that can handle Wi-Fi 6. No Apple 
desktops or laptops as far as wireless connectivity can use Wi-Fi 6 yet. Uh, there's a lot of new stuff that's coming out at the end of this year that probably will be able to utilize this. And I know upcoming, like all the new iPhone 12s and stuff like that, they will be able to use Wi-Fi 6 also. So you might as well get on the bandwagon now, upgrade your hardware, and then you're ready to go when Wi-Fi 6 hits your house. If you're getting value out of this video, don't forget to hit subscribe down below and turn on your bell so you'll know when the next video goes live, as I try to post every Thursday pretty regularly. Okay, so I gave you the info about Wi-Fi 6, why it's important, and what kind of features you might want. Let's talk about what I chose when I went to make the jump to Wi-Fi 6. This is the Asus AX5700 router. The actual model is the RT-8X86U. This router comes in at $249.99 USD. You can pick it up on Amazon, Newegg. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to grab it for yourself. It's actually a really good price considering all the features you have with it and then the future proofing and forward compatibility of it. It is one of the fastest Wi-Fi 6 routers I could find actually. It's designed for gaming. So if your focus is gaming and that's what you want, you want the best bandwidth, the least latency, all that stuff, this is the router to get. It is, it's been fantastic. This is, it is mesh network capable. What that means is if you have dead spots in your house or something, you could get a second Asus router and stick it up in the corners of your house somewhere, turn it on, and then they actually have an app that you can download for this that'll allow you to set up your second router as like a, uh, like a hotspot for your internet. So this would be your main router and then it would like ping another router to give you better signal in the other sections of your household. And you, you don't have to get the exact same router. You can get a lower model router or you can you can use this one and then you decide to upgrade later to a, a different router. You could use this as like your hotspot router, the, the mesh network, and then the new one as your main router. But anyway, let's move on to my current router. This is the TP-Link Touch P5. I've had this thing for a few years now. The model is the AC1900 if you want to look it up online. I wasn't reaching the speeds that were advertised on Wi-Fi. Now I understand a lot of people talk about hardlining and everything like that. Wireless internet has come so far over the years, you do not need to plug in your computer or your laptop or, or your game system to get good connection anymore. Anyway, the speed that this advertises, it says 1300 megabytes per second. Megabits per second, they're different. On five gigahertz network, that's the overall speed together. So it, it's, uh, it's a 1900 megabit per second router, but I'm only, you're only advertised as being able to achieve 1300 megabits per second. And I didn't even achieve that. The fastest I could get it wirelessly was having like an iPhone 11 right next to the router and I only achieved like 450 megabits per second. I know I say only, but when you're paying for something more, you would expect to get what you pay for, right? Now, when I looked to do the upgrade to the router, I also had another problem. This is my old modem. This is the Motorola MB7420. You're gonna need a faster modem than something like this. This was pretty cheap. It's only like 60 bucks or so on Amazon. I'll leave a link for these in the description if you want to pick them up. I had to upgrade our modem to the Motorola MB8600, which can handle up to 1,000 megabits per second, and it is DOCSIS 3.1. If you're going to be doing any kind of gigabit connection, or like I said, anything over 600 megabits per second, you will need a DOCSIS 3.1 modem in order to run at those advertised speeds. Uh, most ISPs offer a modem and router combo together. I know Cox Communications offers their smart Wi-Fi router or a panoramic. That's what they call it. They call it panoramic Wi-Fi. It's a little hub box. You can see it here in the pictures and it has your modem built in. So you plug your cable line or whatever you have directly into that. Most of those ISP routers that they offer, actually, I don't think I've seen any Wi-Fi 6 ones. They're all Wi-Fi 5. Between the ISP's modem that they offer and this is insane. So I wanna talk about my main reason for jumping in on this. And I'm really now an advocate of Wi-Fi 6. Like I think everybody should get this stuff. And they do have better budget options. And I'll put some down below. They have other options. They have another one that's a mesh network designed by default. They have more budget oriented options. If you just wanna get into Wi-Fi 6 
and not really spend a ton of money or gaming is not your focus maybe. But Wi-Fi 6 for the Asus uh, AX5700 that I got has been really great so far. I got it because we have a family of five. I have three kids, my wife and I, playing video games. They're using their cell phones. They're doing watching YouTube videos. I mean, all kinds of stuff. We watch Netflix all the time. As far as like using the bandwidth, I noticed us using a lot more than we used to. And along with the extra usage comes slowing down the network. So you can see here that Asus, not only Asus, but Wi-Fi 6 in general has a real good way to allocate bandwidth as far as like I was talking about with the traffic flow. It's almost like trucks and they deliver the package or your whatever you're downloading to your cell phone, to your computer, to your game system. That brings the information to it and then it comes back for more information and brings it back and forth. Uh, let's talk about the Asus app for a minute. I really enjoyed their app. It's pretty much easy start from the beginning. You just set everything up, set your passwords and everything, and then you leave it go. You don't have to do anything else with it. But that's kind of how Wi-Fi is supposed to be, right? It just works. Asus's app, Asus's? Asus? What's the plural of Asus? I don't know. Their app shows internet security features. So they have like an AI protection built into the app for surfing the web and everything like that. You can actually load the devices and you can monitor the usage and everything and you can even cut the internet off from those devices. In addition to the security and everything, it has, like I said, the monitor usage built in. So you can not only turn on and off the individual devices and stuff, but you can monitor and see how much data is being used from that device. So it kind of allows you, if you have like a data cap, like we do out here in Arizona, on your internet usage, you can actually see who is using the most uh, data in your household. The only major hiccup I found when I first booted this system up, I had everything set up very easily and whatnot. If you go into your settings menu on here, there's a section that says QoS. There, it's just a toggle switch that says enable or disable QoS. If you enable this, what it does is it decides which tasks will get priority on your network. You can drag and drop them back and forth. It's, it's real easy to use. You just slide it up and down. It doesn't allocate for the device. It allocates for what they're doing. So if you want, like for mine, when I enabled it, I wanted streaming to be the top priority. The issue with it is this was enabled from default and the app kind of had a glitch. Like it showed that it wasn't on, but then when I went into my computer settings and actually accessed the router manually through my computer, it was on. So they, they kind of had a disconnect on that point. I had to actually go in and turn it off from the computer. But what I found out you can do is you can enable it on your phone if you're only using the app, and then you can just re-disable it and it'll shut that QoS off. The issue with it is when it allocates bandwidth to the different devices, it will limit certain things. So like my phones that I was using the, the speed test app on were only getting the same numbers that this was getting. When I turned off the QoS, um, my iPhone 11 that I was testing with, within like five feet of my router, got 940 megabits per second. To be able to get that number, I have not gotten that with any device, any network. But that was my only issue with the router itself is that that QoS was on by default even though the app didn't say that it was on. Okay, so takeaways from all of this and this is the, the most important findings of me messing around with this thing for about a month now and trying the settings and stuff. Wi-Fi 6 is here and it's starting to be rolled out in a lot of devices around the world. It wasn't real mainstream last year or when it came out in 2018, I think it actually released, but it is starting to be in devices now. So it would behoove you to buy something that has Wi-Fi 6 in your router if you want to do some kind of a, you know, a modem router upgrade and get rid of the whole rental router that your ISP offers you. I would highly suggest something like this with the Asus. Like I said, they have some other great choices, cheaper models. If you aren't ready to spend this kind of money, you can definitely get into it for under $200 just to start out if that's what you're looking for. But if you want to take advantage of those gigabit speeds over Wi-Fi, this is the setup you're going to need to go with. The biggest difference I noticed is with saturating the Wi-Fi network with devices. The more things I have going on on my network, the slower the network starts to become. 
Now that I have gigabit speeds and I've got a Wi-Fi 6 router that can really allocate the bandwidth appropriately and I haven't noticed any slowdown of the network so it's obviously doing what it says it can do. I'm really happy with the performance of it and again if you're going to start looking for something like this make sure you pay attention to that Wi-Fi 6 logo on there or the 802.11ax. If you got some value from this comment down below and let me know what feature of Wi-Fi 6 is the biggest value for you I guess you could say. And don't forget to hit like because it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Go get Wi-Fi 6. You won't regret it. I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. I don't